In this tutorial we're going to look at how you add the line of worst fit to your, um, your data, to your graph, and uh, we're going to use that line of worst fit together with our line of best fit to determine the uncertainty in our gradient and the uncertainty in our y-intercept. Now unfortunately Excel doesn't have any way that I know of where you can automatically add a line of worst fit um, like we did with our line of best fit. So we're going to have to do this the hard way. We're going to actually have to manually add a line of worst fit. To do that, what you want to do is um, click on the graph. And when you do that, you'll see that you get a design and a format tool pop up the front. What you want to do is click on format. And from here, you have the option to add some shapes. And we're going to use one of these shape tools. So we'll just use the line, the line tool and we're going to actually generate a line of worst fit um, that way. Now generally what you want to do is you want to um, have a line of worst fit that kind of represents the, the worst possible gradient that you could have based on your error bars. So your line of worst fit has to, has to touch or go through all of the error bars um, from one extreme to the other. So I'm going to start kind of over here and see how I go and bring it back I'm going to go through the y-intercept so we can see or calculate later what the y-intercept is. But go through something like that. Alright, I'll leave it like that for now. Um, I might adjust it later. What I'll do is I'll change the colour of that line to um, something different like orange. And that way we can tell it um, tell the difference between that, the line of worst fit, and the blue line which is the line of best fit. Um, what we now have to do is actually calculate the gradient of our line of worst fit. And unfortunately, this job's done by hand as well. Now, at the moment, my grid lines are massive, and um, I've got no way of accurately determining what the gradient is from the graph. So what I want to do is I want to um, click on the graph so the plus button comes up. I want to go to the grid lines, and then from there I want to select primary and um, for both the horizontal and the vertical. And as you can see, that's now added some more grid lines to my graph, which makes it a lot easier for me to work out where things are. Now, for the purpose of the video, to make it easier for you guys to see, I'm just going to inc quickly increase the, uh, the thickness of my grid lines. And that should hopefully make life a lot easier when it comes to the second part of the video. I'll do the same thing for the minor grid lines. Okay. So hopefully you can now see quite clearly the um, the new grid I've got here. Now you do have the ability to manually change the, the gaps between in the grid. Um, at the moment, having a look at it, I think it's, it's probably okay. Um, it looks like on my x-axis I have got a an interval here between between grid lines of um, 0 0.02 and on the y-axis it looks like it's probably 0 0.04 is my interval as I go up there and that's probably pretty good. Okay, um, looking back at my line of worst fit I think that's looking pretty good. So what I can now do is I can actually manually calculate what the um, the gradient is, what the y-intercept is, and I'm going to do that just using some uh, some simple mathematics. So what I'll do, um, so I can sort of draw all over this and, and demonstrate things, I'm going to actually um, take a snip of this graph and I'm going to whack it into OneNote, and that way I'll be able to draw all over it and, and show you what I'm doing step by step. Okay, so there's my graph. In order to um, to work out the gradient to begin with, I'm actually going to um, find two points on the graph where the um, the line moves through. Um, let's have a look here. So zooming in over here, um, it looks like I've got quite a good point right there. That might be one of my coordinates. And if I zoom back out again, just looking at that, come down that seems to line up with um, 0 0.54 
Okay, if we come across, we're looking at there. So that's a 1.64. Okay, so I've got my first coordinate then. This coordinate right there has an x value equal to 0 0.54, I think it was. Double check that, yep. And it's got a y value of 1.64. All right, do the same again, but I'm going to do it for a, a point lower down. Um, so that point there looks pretty perfect. Um, we'll have a look at it. It's going to be a x value of 0. 2O, you can see there that lines up, <clears throat> and it's a Y value, okay, so what have we got here, 0 0.72, 0 0.72, okay, so, this here would be our um, x2 and our y2, and this one up here would be our, our x1 and our y1. Now, as you know, when we're working out gradients, um, the gradient of a line is going to be, uh, so we'll go here, gradient is y2 minus y1, so the change in y over the change in x. So if I substitute numbers in from my, my working out before, um, my y2 is, actually I've just realized I've got that round the wrong way, so we're going to make the, um, we're going to make this our y2 um, instead of our y1, so we're going to have here 1.64 minus the 0 0.72, going to divide that by our x2, which is actually going to be 0.54, minus the other one, which is the 0.20. Okay, so actually over here, that should be they should those should be twos, and over here, they should actually be ones. <clears throat> okay, so coming back over here to our working. Um, we can now whack that in the calculator and figure out what the, the story is there. So we're going to have here 1.64 minus 0.72, and we're going to divide that by 0.54 minus 0.2. So we've got here a gradient of 2.705. Okay, 2.7 times 3 sig fig 2.71. Now we want to be um, good with our units, so thinking about it, it's rise over run. Uh, the rise units are seconds, and the run units are square root kilograms. So we have 2.71 seconds per square root kilogram. Okay, just check comparing that to my um, original gradient of 2.87. Um, we know that uh, the orange line is a shallower line, it's got a smaller gradient, and just to check that my mathematics was right, or at least in the right ballpark, I can see that my gradient for the orange line is 2.71, my gradient for the blue line, the best fit line, is 2.87, so that checks out. So we have a gradient of our, we can probably summarise this now, so down the bottom here we've got a, a gradient for our best fit line of 2.87 and again it's seconds per square root kilogram. Um, I think what I'll do is um, square root kilogram is the same as kilogram to the power of a half and because it's um, per kilogram, per square root kilogram we'll call it SKG to the power of negative a half. It doesn't actually matter how you label it, you can label it either way, it's no big deal. Now the gradient for the the worst 
fit line. Is my 2.71, and again it's the same units. <clears throat> excuse me, seconds, kilograms to power of negative a half. Now the whole point of that is that um, to work out what the uncertainty in the gradient is. Okay, so uncertainty in the gradient. Now normally I'd actually call that change in m, um, and I'd use m for the best fit and m dash for the worst fit, but because we've got mass in this um, equation or mass in this uh, experiment, it's kind of confusing. So I'm just going to write it out, uncertainty and gradient. Now the uncertainty and gradient is the difference between the gradient for the best fit and worst fit lines. It's the absolute value of the difference. So Whichever way you do it, it's just a positive number, okay? So we're going to go big minus small, so it'll be the 2.87 minus 2.71, okay? Now, of course, you can do the stuff in your head, but um, I think in the interest of making sure that you don't make any silly mistakes, we're going to go 2.87 minus 2.71, like that, and we've got 0 0.16. <clears throat> okay, so 0.16, and we really want to round that to one significant figure. So we're going to go 0 0.2, and it's going to be um, the same units as before, seconds, kilograms, the power of negative a half. Okay, that's part of the job done. I'm just going to put a nice big box around that, because that is our uncertainty and our gradient, which we need later on when we're comparing to theory. <clears throat> Next step, our y-intercept also has an uncertainty. So at the moment, based on our equation, we have a y-intercept of 0.1137. Okay, so um, y-intercept for the best fit is equal to, what did I say before, 0.1137. Okay, and we've got, <clears throat> as well as that, a y-intercept for our worst fit as well. <clears throat> Which is, looking at that, roughly 0.16. Yep, that's right. Okay, so 0 0.16. Like last time, the uncertainty in our intercept, and I'm just going to be lazy here and go like that, okay? The uncertainty in our intercept will be the best fit minus the worst fit. Okay, yep, that's the absolute value, so the positive difference. Um, this number here being our best fit, and this number here being our, our worst fit. So we're going to have here... Um, it's the absolute value again, so it doesn't really matter about the um, the order, so it'll be, we may as well just keep it simple actually and go the other way around, because that way it's going to come out positive straight away. So we're going to have here um, 0 0.16 minus 0 0.1137. Again, we may as well just use the old calculator to get this right, 0.16 minus 0 0.1137, 0 0.0463. Okay, again, we want to round this to one significant figure, so it's going to be 0 0.05, and the units, of course, are seconds, and I probably should have included my second units up there as well. <clears throat> so that there is our uncertainty for our y-intercept. Now what this means is we're now in a position to actually write the final equation which includes uncertainties. So if we go all the way back up to the very beginning there, we've got t is equal to 2.87. Okay, so we'll write this out over here. t is equal to 2.87. And it is plus or minus. It's got an uncertainty. 
and the uncertainty in the gradient was 0 0.2 and that is all square root mass and where if you again have a look back at it it's plus 0.1137 and our intercept has got an uncertainty of plus or minus 0 0.05 now our numbers um, here and here can't be more accurate than our uncertainty. So we're going to have to do a little bit of um, uh, fiddling with the numbers to have the significant figures um, correct and decimal places correct. So based on that, our final equation, which I'll write in black, becomes t is equal to 2.5. 9, okay, plus or minus 0 0.2 square root m plus 0 0.11 plus or minus 0 0.05. So that there is all correct with the correct number of significant figures. So that there is how you complete um, almost the last part, really, of the 3.1 practical for NCEA Level 3 Physics. Um, we've now got as far as our final equation for the relationship between period and square root mass, and our equation includes uncertainties. In the next video, we'll look at how we can use our equation from um, our experiment and compare that to the theoretical equation in order to, to make some uh, decisions about how, how accurate our experiment was, to think about um, some reasons for the possible um, difference between theory and um, our own results. And uh, later on in your discussion, you might also think about other things as well, um, like techniques for improving accuracy, um, comparing it to the real life context. There's a whole bunch of stuff you can do, which we'll talk about later. Okay, thank you.